Knowledge is Power series, Know Your Rights with Immigration Enforcement Officers, otherwise known as ICE. Important Reminders. This presentation includes general information about your rights in the United States and what to do in an interaction with ICE. This information has been reviewed by our legal team to address the basics of interactions with immigration officials. At no time is the following legal advice. Always consult with a lawyer regarding your specific legal case. Overview. Know your rights when ICE comes to your door. Know your rights when ICE is in your home. Know your rights with ICE when outside or in your community. Know your rights with ICE while driving. Sanctuary cities, services in New York City for immigrants, traveling and immigration status, driver's licenses updates. Know your rights at home when ICE is outside our doors. It was 5.30 a.m. when ICE came to Esther's apartment. ICE stands for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. The agents lied to Esther, saying they were police officers investigating a crime and her husband, Alexi, was a potential witness. Is Alexi home? They asked innocently. Now Esther's gut told her she should cooperate, but she remembered something she'd heard on the radio. ICE had been making early morning sweeps using tricks like this to get people to open their doors. Esther remembered she had rights. ICE may try similar tricks at your home. They may say they're looking for a friend, relative, or roommate, but do not be fooled and do not open the door. Instead, remain calm and be polite. Tell the agents that you'd like to see a warrant and their ID. Ask them to slip these documents under the door or hold them up to the people. Without a warrant signed by a judge, ICE is not allowed to enter or search your home. ICE usually won't have a warrant, but they may lie and say they do or show you something else that looks official. So look carefully and take pictures of whatever they show you. If they refuse to share any of these documents, then ask them for their card and contact information. Do not show the agents anything or say anything, except, I do not consent for you to enter my home. I do not want to talk to you without a lawyer present. Please leave. Now, ICE won't always listen to you and may enter your home using force. But saying these things might help you in court, even if the agents don't listen. The other videos in this series will help you understand your rights if ICE enters your home or arrests you. Esther and Alexi knew their rights and the officers left. This is all scary, but remember, we have rights. After an encounter with ICE, take notes about what happened, writing down as many details as you can remember. This information might be helpful in future immigration proceedings. It's important that you and your loved ones are prepared for encounters with ICE and that you have a plan for what to do if one of you is arrested, including information about who to call. If ICE comes to your home, remember, you have rights. Do not open the door. Ask to see a warrant signed by a judge. Tell them you do not consent to them being at your home. Please leave. If a loved one is arrested, you should be able to locate them at locator.ice.gov. Who is ICE? Immigration and Customs Enforcement, otherwise known as ICE, is one of the federal agencies responsible for deporting people in the United States. In many instances, they lie in order to enter the home. They often pretend to be the police to get permission to enter a home by saying they are the police or federal police. Examples of these lies include, we need help with a criminal investigation. We need to talk to you about potential criminal issue. Know your rights at home. ICE needs a warrant signed by a judge, otherwise known as a judicial warrant. 
or they need verbal permission to enter the home. Ask ICE to slip the warrant or documents under the door. If you can, take a picture of the documents. ICE often brings a warrant signed by ICE itself. This does not give them the right to enter. Judicial warrant versus an ICE administrative warrant. Remember, I do not consent. I do not want to talk. Please leave. We have rights. Do not open the door. Saying these things might help you in court. After an encounter with ICE, schedule an appointment with your attorney or seek legal advice as soon as possible. If a family member has been detained by ICE, go to locator.ice.gov. When ICE is inside our homes. One morning, while Alicia and Javi were getting their daughter, Sophia, ready for daycare, two agents from ICE knocked on their door. ICE stands for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. The agents said they were police officers and were worried that Alicia's identity had been stolen. Javi cracked the door open to learn more. <laughs> this was the wrong decision. Do not open the door if authorities come to your home, no matter what they say. Without a warrant signed by a judge, they have no authority to enter. But beware, ICE may enter your home forcefully anyway. And if they do, you ask them to leave if they don't have the proper warrant. Be prepared. Do not panic. And remember, we have rights. ICE agents may search your home for documents or other evidence proving immigration status. They do not have the right to do this unless they have a warrant signed by a judge that lets them inside and specifically gives them permission to search. ICE usually will not have a warrant, but they may lie and say they do, or show you something else that looks official. Tell ICE, I do not agree with you being in my home. Please leave. If the agents start to search, tell them, I do not agree to your search. These words can be legally powerful, and saying them might help in immigration proceedings, even if the agents don't listen. You have the right to ask ICE agents for their ID, their contact information, and their warrant, and to take pictures of any documents they show you. They probably won't give these documents to you. Do not answer any questions and do not share a loved one's whereabouts or show them any documents, even if they ask except for a valid U.S. passport or green card. This information can hurt you in immigration proceedings. Alicia was arrested. Never interrupt an arrest, as it could be dangerous for you or your loved ones. After the agents left, Javi took pictures of the damage to his home. He wrote down as many details about the encounter as he could remember knowing it might help Alicia's immigration proceedings. Other videos in this series will help you understand what your rights are if you're arrested by ICE, and how you can try to prevent agents from entering your home in the first place. It's important that you and your loved ones are prepared for encounters with ICE, and that you have a plan for what to do if one of you is arrested, including information about who to call. If ICE enters your home, remember, you have rights. Tell them you do not agree to their presence or search. Ask to see a warrant signed by a judge. Do not interrupt an arrest. If a loved one is arrested, you should be able to locate them at locator.ice.gov. Know your rights in your home. If ICE has a proper judicial warrant, they will enter the home regardless of whether they've been given permission to do so. Ask them to leave if they entered and do not have a judicial warrant. ICE will ask if the person they want to detain is present or their phone number if not home. If the person is not there, ICE often contacts the person to arrange a meeting while acting like the police. 
Immigration officials do not have the right to look through your belongings for immigration-related documents unless they have a warrant signed by a judge. They are only legally able to look with their eyes, not open locked doors. If they entered without your permission, say, I do not agree with you being in my home. Please leave. If they are searching, say, I do not agree to your search. These words can be powerful in an immigration hearing before a judge. You have the right to ask for the ICE agent's contact information and their warrant. You have the right to take pictures of any documents because they will probably not want to give them to you. Do not interrupt if a family member or friend is being arrested. If ICE is arresting you, tell them if you have medical or child care needs. Remember, make a plan if you are at risk of these instances happening. More about this is in the next slide. Importance of creating a family preparedness plan in case of emergencies. Familia, I know we've all been worried since the election, but yesterday in class, my teacher handed out some materials called Know Your Rights, and reading through them made me feel more prepared. All immigrants living in the U.S., even those who are undocumented, have rights guaranteed by the Constitution. We can't predict if immigration officers will look for you and dad because you don't have legal status, but we can be prepared and have a good plan in place if they do. You're right, Niha. Let's make a plan together. First, we should find a local legal aid organization or pro bono attorney that helps immigrants. We need to seek the help of a qualified legal professional, not a notario. Notarios are not legally qualified to provide immigration help, and some are just looking to scam us. A legal professional can help us if anything happens. I don't think we have to worry about this, but the Know Your Rights materials so that people who have criminal records and people who have been deported are at high risk and should see a lawyer now. Second, and this one is really important, mom and dad, you need to play detective and find, make copies, and organize into a binder all of our important documents. IDs, birth certificates, marriage, medical, financial and school records, and immigration records and letters, including your alien registration number if you have one, the eight digit number that begins with an A. You can share these with a lawyer to keep them safe. You should also ask the lawyer about how you can designate someone else to care for me and Marty, since we're minors, if you are detained or deported. The options will be different in different states, but may include a guardianship, a caregiver's authorization affidavit, a power of attorney, or other types of letters or forms. This person should be someone you trust who has legal status. This designation means that if anything happens that makes it hard for you to communicate with us, like you are placed in a detention center, the person you've chosen can step in and make important decisions to keep our family from being separated. Mama, you joke about your memory going, but you need to memorize the name and phone number for the lawyer, for me, and for the guardians you choose for me and Marty. We should also start saving money for legal fees or bonds. We can check to see if there is a community bond fund nearby. If you are afraid to speak with ICE, there are red cards that you can hand to the officer during an ICE interaction. These can be found at www.ilrc.org slash red cards. Know your rights outside when ICE is outside in the streets. It was a normal afternoon. Judy and her friend Liz went out for lunch. The two met in elementary school and have been friends ever since. Liz is an American citizen, and while Judy was brought to the U.S. by her parents when she was only four years old, she is undocumented. Liz noticed two men that seemed to be following them, but she thought nothing of it. That's when the men called out Judy's name as if they were old friends. When she turned, the men approached fast. 
Judy had just been identified by ICE. ICE stands for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Stories like this happen every day and are happening now more than ever. ICE approaches people in the street, at work, in their car, or even in court. They often will not be in uniform. It's scary. But remember, we have rights. If you are stopped by authorities and don't know who they are, ask them to identify themselves. Then ask, am I free to go? If they say yes, walk away and do not answer any questions. In Judy's case, the agents told her she was not free to go. If this happens, do not resist or run away and do not say anything, except I want to use my right to remain silent. I want to speak to a lawyer. Remember, you can ask to speak to a lawyer even if you don't have one. If the agent search your bag or your person, say, I do not agree to this search. They are looking for documents proving your immigration status. Witnesses have the right to film the interaction as long as they do not interrupt the arrest and they are transparent that they are filming. Judy was lucky. Even if you do everything right in a similar scenario, ICE may still arrest you. Another video in this series will help you understand your rights if you are arrested. After the encounter, Judy and Liz took notes about what happened, writing down as many details as they could remember. Be sure that you and your loved ones are prepared for encounters with ICE and that you have a plan for what to do if one of you is arrested, including information about who you should call. If I stops you in your community, remember, you have rights. Remain silent. Ask to speak to a lawyer. Say you do not agree to their search. If a loved one is arrested, you should be able to locate them at locator.ice.gov. ICE approaches people in the street, at work, in their car, or even in court. They often will not be in uniform. If you are stopped, ask them to identify themselves. Ask if you are free to go. If they say yes, walk away and do not answer any questions. Do not resist. Instead say, I want to use my right to remain silent. I want to speak to a lawyer. If agents search your bag, Ask to speak with your lawyer and say, I do not agree to this search. Take notes of everything that has happened. Speak with your lawyer as soon as possible after any interaction with ICE. Know your rights in a car. Is it going to be hard to find this place? I didn't catch that. No, I've got the newest phone. It'll be a piece of cake, actually. Okay, I'll call the nearest cheesecake factory. What? No. Oh, no, 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 This cannot be happening. Recalculating route two. Escape from police. Would you turn that thing off? Stay calm. But I don't have any immigration papers. What if the police ask me about that? Recalculating route two. Jail. Relax. Okay, you have rights that can protect you whether you have full legal status or not. Okay, so what do I do? Depart car and continue route on foot. Don't listen to Siri. Remain calm. Show your license, registration, proof of insurance. You always have the right to remain silent, and you don't have to answer questions about your immigration status, where you were born, or how you got to this country. So the police ask me that directly. I really don't have to answer those questions at all? Absolutely not. If you have immigration papers, you're required to show them if a federal immigration agent asks for them. But if you don't have them and any law enforcement officer asks, you can just tell them you're choosing to remain silent and keep quiet. Okay, anything else? Yeah, don't lie and say you have status when you don't. Searching Google for forged documents. What? Why not? This is a smartphone. Fake documents will only incriminate you. Never give any falsified documents. Your phone is dumb. I couldn't connect with the Cheesecake Factory. Would you like me to try again? Listen, they might ask to search you or the vehicle, but you don't have to say yes. They can only search you if they think there's evidence of a crime. And remember, Siri, even you have the right to remain silent. Central Hall Cheesecake Factory, this is Evan. 
your focus should be on following the officer's orders. If there's no issue, you can ask if you're free to go. If you're not free to go, then you're being detained. Okay, so what if I am being detained? Don't resist. Say you wish to remain silent and ask to speak with a lawyer before you agree to anything. You can actually ask to speak with a lawyer at any moment during the stop. Oh, man, I think you should run. Okay, stay calm. Exercise my rights. No fake papers. And politely refuse to answer any questions about my immigration status. I got this. What about you? I'm not driving, so the officer can request my name or ID, but... Unless the officer suspects me of a crime, as a passenger, I'm not required to give my name or show ID or answer any other questions. I have the right to ask if I'm free to leave and only have to stay if I'm suspected of a crime. Lucky you. Look, if you ever feel like your rights have been violated, just remember the details of the stop, like the officer's name and badge, what kind of questions you were asked and how long the stop took, and then get in touch with your local ACLU. Redirecting to AC Saloon. No, the American Civil Liberties Union. I'm sorry, I found no results for Pelican Sizzle Library Onion. Drivers and passengers have the right to remain silent. If you're a passenger, you're not required to give your name, show ID, or answer any other questions, unless you're suspected of a crime. If you're the driver, show your license, registration, and proof of insurance if you have them. Ask if you're free to leave. You only need to stay if you are suspected of a crime. If the officer says yes, you're free to go, then calmly leave. You do not have to answer questions about your immigration status, where you were born, or how you got to the country. If an officer or immigration agent asks to look inside your car, you can refuse to consent to the search. If police generally believe that your car contains evidence of a crime, your car can be searched without your consent. Remember, you always have the right to remain silent. Sanctuary Cities Sanctuary Cities is a range of policies that prevent local officials from cooperating and or sharing information with Immigration and Custom Enforcement, otherwise known as ICE, due to certain bills in place to protect these cities. Although there have been recent attacks by the current federal administration to end policies protecting sanctuary cities, current policies remain and are in place. An example is New York City and the five boroughs. Upstate New York versus New York City. In upstate New York, the policies and regulations that govern ICE involvement with state officials are different than those of New York City. Certain Counties have recently set certain policies that limit ICE enforcement, but they vary from county to county. Services in New York City for Immigrants, IDNYC, Translation, Privacy, and New York State Driver's License. Traveling within the U.S. Always speak with a lawyer before making travel arrangements. CBP has more active presence in other states than in New York. CBP officers are allowed checkpoints within 100 miles of an international border. CBP officers frequently check documents on Greyhound buses and Amtrak trains throughout the U.S. Given the COVID-19 pandemic, it is not recommended to travel at the moment. Driver's license in New York and recent updates. The law became effective on December 16, 2019. You do not need a social security to apply for a license or permit. You must show a combination of documents that prove your name, date of birth, and New York State residency. Your license or permit will not look different from other standard New York driver's licenses. You still need to pass tests to get a permit and a license. For more information on the green light law and driver's licenses, please check out dmv.ny. Dot G O V.